queen in black and silver and white beyond her, and their bodyguard behind with the banners of all the commanders. Let's see if there's going to be a Yorkist response. The Yorkists seem to have been taken completely by surprise. The Queen and the Prince are surveying the battlefield, eyeing up the enemy's strength. The royal couple, the mother and son, now advancing together into the centre and standing there, challenging Edward and his brother and their followers, waiting to see how they're going to respond. And I see the young Prince, he's got his helmet on, he's got his armour on, he's, he's got all his weapons with him. He is a just surveying the scene at the moment. In real life, the couple who play the uh, Queen and the Prince of Wales are actually mother and son. And they've taken these roles together year after year. And King Edward and his banners are advancing to meet them. There's going to be a parley. Richard of Gloucester beside his brother, and Lord Hastings there and all the banners of the commanders following to show the strength of the House of York. Edward striding in front, his height topping up those around him. Interestingly, neither have their helmets on. They're clearly going forward for a peaceful parley. I would assume it's to show that they have no designs. And it's the 18-year-old Prince of Lancaster, Prince of Wales, who is now speaking to the king. One can only imagine the language passing between them, each one accusing the other of being a pretender, an imposter, each one trying to persuade the other to surrender. Oh, dear. Edward struck the prince oh, twice. Oh, that's and true. the prince has punched okay. him back. It's an exchange of taunts and insults now. And here comes the queen, standing in front. A cop actually slapped King Edward across the face. That's woman, isn't it? Oh. I could actually hear that like a pistol <laughs> shot. And again, <laughs> right and left hook, the she wolf of France has sprung and struck. And a blushing and discomfited Edward, clearly very angry, falls back upon his men as the Queen and her son return to their guards. Edward, to avoid losing face, summons some of his guards to him. Takes a chance to look at the strength of Lancaster, their dispositions. And now starts, slowly and with such dignity as he can salvage, to make his way back to his men. Some of his henchmen are going forth into the centre of the field, dangerously close to the Lancastrian <coughs> royal party. Considering Margaret was at the point of turning tail and going back to France just a few brief days earlier, this is, um, she's utterly committed now, I would say, wouldn't you? She is. Their blood's up. Young Richard of Gloucester, a moment ago, was shaking his fist at the enemy, <laughs> waving a spear at them. And the Lancastrian Mountain Scout is hovering around dangerously near the Yorkist army, and driving them back. He's exchanging blows with them. The very first hand-to-hand -hand blows in the battle have now been exchanged. The Battle of Tewkesbury proper has just begun. And both royal parties now retire upon their armies to launch them into battle. So we've seen, we've seen the spectacle, we've seen the flags, we've seen the exchange of unpleasantries, we've seen a small amount of violence, but now it's going to start to get really ugly. The men are now, the adrenaline is starting to course through their bodies. They know this is where it's going to get very, very real. This is where all of their training, all of their previous battle experience, some of them would have been at the Battle of Barnet not very long ago, they know what's going to happen and how unpleasant this could this is going to be. Oh! responding in. And the slight dampness in the air is making the powder crack beautifully. That's a 
fine, fine sound. And the handgun's notoriously um, unreliable, but also very inaccurate. You don't get snipers uh, with the handguns, or indeed the artillery pieces. None of the barrels are rifle for a start. So the um, undersized ball can actually fly out at quite an angle. However, if it hits you, it will go through you, and the man behind you, and the man behind him and his horse. It'd probably use grape shots or chain shot to do maximum human damage. Smell. Just a little exchange there, an exchange of shots. If you imagine, the loudest thing most of these men have ever heard is the sound of church bells coming up, their wife shouting at them. These tools are the weapons of the devil. They smell like the devil. They sound like the devil. And they are actually weapons of fear. <laughs> Meanwhile, an older but equally lethal type of weapon is a game in combat. You see the archers coming forward almost up against each other to pick up their arrows in order to have a return match. And some of them are exchanging blows with swords. Oh, they get me. And now both types of projectile are being returned. The first volley of gunfire has gone. The arrows have been regathered, and the archers are ready to fight and kill again. There are two types of arrow that they fire. One is for piercing armor, the other is for piercing flesh. And so when you see them coming towards you, you choose the arrow point, and you let it loose. With the draw of 120 pounds upon the arrow you're drawing back, you take it the strict back as oh, far as your ear, you and that can launch an arrow through somebody's oh, plate armor. You can hear some of the commands being given on the field as a trumpet of some sort, or some kind of brass instrument, actually passing on a battlefield command. Much more reliable than the huge voice or flags, particularly in foggy weather, as happened. Battle of St Albans that happened there. It was very, very foggy, and they had to rely on the trumpet for the signal calls. Now, now comes the army of Lancaster. Queen Margaret's decided to take the initiative and hit first and hard, and the entire Lancastrian army is now advancing across the field to attack the army of York. Their blood is up, they're tired, and they're trapped. And the way they are reacting is simply to take the initiative, hit the enemy hard and fast, break their nerve and morale, take them off the field, and then slaughter them when they're running. These are the brutal realities of warfare at this time. So nearest to us on the Lancastrian side, you can see the Duke of Somerset, along with the uh, commanders. You've got the King and the right, young Prince of Wales, rather, in the centre. And then you've got uh, Devon to the far side of the field. <laughs> you want me to quit smoking? <laughs> yeah, I know. Somerset there leading his men from the front at the moment. Not afraid to be in direct firing line. And you can see the Yorkists are getting their blood up. They're jumping up and down there. Flashing weapons together. 